everybody. We're here with Tilda Swinton. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Strong, wrong stream. Wrong stream. I, I, I tried. Sorry. Uh, sorry, Aaron. We mixed that up a little bit. Um, do you want to introduce yourself to our audience and our friends who are watching at home? This golden shower stream of <laughs> graphic design. And, and uh, hello, everybody. You know what? I'm listen. I'm, there's no way I'm anywhere near a Tilda Swinton. And I'm sorry, Hawk Rattle, that you got caught with my in, in the muck <laughs> with me. Uh, I'm Aaron Draplin. Hi, everybody. I'm live here. I'm excited for tomorrow. Graphic designer, Portland, Oregon, 48 years old, uh, uh, near death. Um, uh, corns are killing me. Uh, lower back hurts, bruised ego. But otherwise, things are good. You know, and, but staying uh, creative, right? That's what counts. How are you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. It is uh, rainy here in Southern California, so I'm just taking it in and letting the rain wash all my problems away. Oh, wow. Okay. Right? All right. All right. Well, Good Portland, thousands. Oregon, it's, you know, it was dry for about 40 seconds yesterday, and now it's back to being wet uh, uh, all, all winter long. Which yes. Is, and uh, Voodoo Val in our chat says, wow, Tilda is looking great. So some compliments from chat. Uh, loving this. All right. Um, all right. So let's talk about a little bit what you're doing tomorrow while we're talking. And then I have some just like hard hitting questions for you. Uh, we're going to get into a little conversation. What's going on tomorrow? You're doing some stuff at Max, right? I'm a little nervous because I have been lucky to do um, a lot of these things, you know, in part to folks like yourself. So thank you, Andrew, for being a part of all this mess and all the Adobe people behind the scenes. But how many times does one get to do this? And tomorrow is my ninth talk. So we we kind of shifted gears. Um, I kind of let it all hang out last year after doing it eight years of letting it all hang out. And tomorrow, we're just going to take a sketch, one take, and bring it live in Illustrator and complete it. And I don't even know if I'll even pull it off, but come see it tomorrow. We did it in one take here in Portland. Had all this film crew and booms and shit. And I don't even... I. I'm a little nervous because I just hope you guys dig it because it just kind of shows like we're just, we just went for it. What I do all the time. It's all about showing how to um, not be so afraid of a blank page, a sketch under your machine, architecture, build it in illustrator, tune it up and then send that thing off to get it made and not, you know, not toil over it. Right. Or you know, yeah. it's, it's really easy to get, you know, mired down by all the other people doing cool stuff around you. And I, uh, that stuff tends to make me a little poopy. Sometimes I see, you know, <laughs> these, these people putting out all this awesome stuff around me and then I get, oh, I can't do it. No, sometimes you just got to go for it. So that's what yep. we try to show tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a magic word in design sometimes. And the word is just sure. You hit a point where you're like, sure. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Um, so, if you want to watch uh, this stream and tune in tomorrow, everyone, it is uh, number MB134 in your catalog. Uh, you can look that up, tune in. It's going to be a great time. It is tomorrow, Wednesday, October 27th, 1130 a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, go and add that to your schedule. Um, so, Aaron, all right, we're just going to hop in. I got some questions for you. Um, and it's going to be around the theme of kind of past, present, and future. You've been in the industry for a hot minute. You said ninth time doing this stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit about where Draplin is right now. What's going on with the business, with design, that kind of stuff, new products, all that fun stuff. Well, um, client work is just one little pinky finger on the 10, you know, um, doing lots of fun product collabs um, where we try to make things at a fair price good quality with our friends, um, you know, doing some records for some bands, um, not obviously not going on the road anymore, you know, because we're all in the lockdown and, you know, here, you know, I'm in my backyard here in Portland. Um, but you know, it's par for the course. Uh, it's the same stuff I've always been doing. Um, but a little more of a focus on the internal, you know, and, and, you know, I, I know we were talking about this ahead of time, but, um, you know, I still sell a lot of merch and that's turned into just, a wonderful sort of nightmare, right? And, <laughs> and, and just how to mitigate all that stuff. So I have a new website coming, which is going to make it, you know, our site is going to work on these things called phones and iPads and shit. It's going to be great. It's, you know, very 2021, if you will. Um, that's coming soon. And um, we're just going to kind of update ourselves so you can use this thing, you know, and, and find posters and goodies and merch on your phone, right? But yep, not yep. to mention a mountain of stuff that I get to celebrate. So all those times I got to see you guys at Creative South or on the road or wherever, I'm showing a lot of that stuff. Not to mention all the work I've been able, so lucky to do. So um, 
we've been on a website basically all summer long and um, I am prepping that stuff nightly, nightly shifts when no one's calling, you know, and then I, I, I hammer it out all, all night. So uh, that's what I got going on, but it's sort of internal, you know, yeah. um, I'm doing a little bit of client work, um, which, you know, sends me whirling off into the ether because they have all the control. They can start me, stop me and you know, all that <laughs> kind of stuff. Um, but just a little bit, just a little bit, a lot more just sort of organizing all the wildness I've been so lucky to do. Yep. And I think that that brings me to my next question, which is Draplin uh, as the person, as the brand, I feel like has evolved over the last couple of years, right? That it's turned into the products and turned into like a business for you, right? Uh, what's that transition been like to evolve and change? And even over the last few years, having to evolve and change more, um, what's kind of your mindset going into those changes and evolutions of Draplin? Well, it sounds so exciting. Right? It sounds it's so lot, exciting. It's a lot crustier than that. You really, you really I try to really, space it up for you. Really pouring the syrup on the turd and calling it a pancake. That's my job. You really, you know, thank you. Uh, you have to understand, like, this is insane to even talk like this because I get folks who are writing me now and saying, we would like Draplin products for our store. They don't even really know that I'm a graphic designer that makes logos for his friends or big honking things, right? They don't even know that world. They just see the knives and the blankets and the hats and the things and the stuff and the merch. And that's pretty weird um, and, and, and you know a little confusing because you know I'm used to those calls coming in and saying, hey, you know, whatever your price is for this logo, we're gonna cut it by a third, you know, that kind of shit. That's what I'm used to. Yep. But when they come to you because they just see this sort of DDC brand, um, well, in the last you know year and a half during this pandemic, we were releasing watches and fun stuff, things that I use, right? Things that I use and yet um, want to make at a fair price, you know? So none of the stuff that we buy and then like, you know, blow it out of the water and make it some crazy limited edition or whatever you want to call it. No, it's like stuff that you can get that's got a pretty custom twist to it, but still at a fair price is just the best. You know, so the watches and stuff and like, Ooh. like I got to make a Timex watch. Now, what does that even mean? Am I a graphic designer or did I just get a call from Timex and say, hey, make us a cool watch. And I said, well, how many can I get to sell and how much are they? I can't have them be 300 bucks. No, they're 90 bucks. Like if you go out to Target, they're like 70 bucks. Right. So with a bunch of extra details and cool packaging and stuff, yeah, I guess you get the sort of DDC experience. That's new for me. That's yep. new for me. Here's something that's kind of cool. I'll just sort of show here. My buddy's made a little record. I got to design the record and it's going to be coming out on DDC records. This is just a little sneak peek. This band called Harsh Mellow. And look, we're doing our first record release. Look at the, the, the orange vinyl that was Ooh. pressed at Third Man Records in, uh, in Detroit, Michigan. Oh, heck yeah. Third Man's uh, the place. Third Man, right? So look, at we got to do a Stoughton package. It comes with a little sticker. This is all this little sneak peek, you know. And anyway, I'm not supposed to even show this stuff, but I can't take it anymore. I've been sitting on this shit for months. It's and that's wild. Coming out. That's coming it's out. live, baby. We're going live, baby. So the idea that like someone comes to me, my buddies in a band say, hey, you've got some bandwidth. You like to make a bunch of stuff and sell it. Help us sell our record. Of yep. course. And I got to design it, produce it put it together. They come with the, the songs. I mean, the songs rip. And then we got to you know make this awesome package and then, you know, sell it at a fair price. And it's got Buzz and Dale from the Melvins. On oh, it, yeah. Doing a little, uh, you know, a little moonlighting. Yeah. That's what I love about you and kind of the, the the stuff that you build on the conversations that we've had is like, yes, Draplin Design Co. is like this massive thing and products and all that, but it's always about the community. Uh, and even conversations that we have, it always comes back to the creative community in general. And you've kind of been a pillar for that and really an advocate for that. And I love hearing that you get to do this awesome, you know, record stuff. And it's really just you for your friends. You're just like, I just want to hang out with my friends and you get to make this cool product. You're like, I'm just doing it because it's fun and just get to hang out with my friends. Um, it, you know, it, it becomes a little business. And if we yeah. make one penny over what we had to put out to make this thing, here's the deal. Who cares if we don't? You know, yep. we have to pay, you know, the, the bass player, we have to pay the guitar guy from the band. And then, cause they put, they fronted money too. But here's the thing, how many times in your life do you get to help your buddies make a record? It's, it's pretty random. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty sparse. So um, it happened and they're going to go out there. And I, you know, the weird part is once the record weirdos come after us because of how rare they are, I think we've made a thousand of them or something, they'll sell out. But for my design friends, 
you know, get this thing, listen to it, learn about a new band and then see the design. You know, it's like, that's, that's the full kit for me. You know, I don't really, it's not really even about like, if you make any money and see, that's what, you know, these watches and this stuff and the blankets. And I made some slippers, man. I mean, some serious. Oh yeah. I have the slippers here. Oh, do you? (laughs) I mean, these things are just weird, man. I don't even know how to put a word on it. It's just weird. You know, the word is, Blah, 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 blah. I don't know, know what it is. It's just, you know, to go and, and, and waltz around here doing the trash and doing the recycling and my own little pair of lazy loafers. It is the coolest thing in the world. And then when you go look at free wires, the best part about these guys is they they actually give back to help people who need water and stuff. This is an old story. A lot Heck of yeah. brands do it. They lies brands do it, but they actually put their put their money where the water is, you know, and they do it and they do it to help people. So I'm down with that. We got to make a fun little thing at a fair price. I think they were 66 bucks, not 166, not 200, something crazy. You know, sometimes out there when you see this like exclusive gear from a graphic designer or one of us or someone, and then it's like six times the price because it's so cool and exclusive at MoMA or something. That shit freaks me out, man. These are 66 bucks. And you get to, you get to do company. something good with it too, that you're you're serving the community and you're serving the world and everybody wins with Draplin. I think that that's just the takeaway from this is that everyone wins with Draplin. See, there, um, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, we thanks. do have a couple of questions coming in from chat. Um, right. And... Uh, oh, let's ask this. This is actually a good question about building business. Uh, a friend in chat says, do you do everything alone or do you have people, a team around you to help? Well, I have my little moonbeam Lee who does all the shipping, you know, and that girl is patient. There is no number to express what everyone likes to say. A hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent, 106 percent. She is a very patient young lady who does all the merch shipping here. And it's as easy as that. I mean, first of all, I get a call from a company. They offer, you know, here's the substrate, here's the, the chassis. And, and what do you think? Would you want to color this thing up and put a little bit of graphics on it? And here's what we're looking at to make, you know, how many to make. And that's me. I do that phone call. I cry a little bit on the phone and say, listen, you're going to sell a bunch, but I need a bunch to play with up here. Because next time Andrew Hockrattle comes through town, I want to give him a pair or take five pair on the road. See what I'm saying? Yep. As long as you got those size 15s, it's going to be a... <laughs> we negotiate. We negotiate. <laughs> Yeah, word is Mike Jones got that big meat foot of his into some of these. So I'm I'm feeling good about that. I'm ready. I saw proof. Yes. Um, 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 Mike Jones is running for mayor of Columbus next year. Just so I'm, I'll announce well, it right now. We're just announcing that. I, I 100% lying. support I'm that. Lying. Yeah, Maybe it's it was Lonnie Terenzi. Anyway. Uh, uh, can, can we show the record one more time? There's a bunch of people asking for what the record was called, what the band is, that kind of stuff. I don't Let's know if plug. I should. I don't know. It's a... Uh, it's a, band called Harsh, it's a band called Harshmellow, and I got to do the cover and all the back cover and stuff. But this is coming soon on DDC Records. Give you, I was yes. that sound. But they did a thousand records, and we did a we did an orange vi- a little orange seven inch and cool labels. Print little black, little, little cool little black inner sleeve. Comes with a little sticker sheet, and you can get the download yes. and the whole deal. It's so cool. Anyway, Tosses on a skateboard, shred them up. Yeah, I mean, this is like. Um, when I was a kid, man, it's who I, I got these kits from someone who was maybe 48 years old, making it with their friends. And we're, the cycle just sort of continues. So, um, you know, that initiative to just do this thing, like, you know, here's the thing that's important is if it doesn't make any money, it's OK. Sometimes that's OK. You know, yep. um, I think that people UPC code and business plan themselves into the dirt. And then it takes away a lot of the spirit of like, just kind of just kind of fucking going for it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Sometimes you just kind of got to go for it, right? Yeah. And that's kind of what tomorrow is about is to say, I don't know if you'll even like it, but I did it. I pulled you it off it. while the cameras it- are here and there's proof at the end. You know, yep. so anyway. And that goes to a, a great question that I was going to go to uh, anyways next is someone's asking, and I think this is a great, uh, I'm interested in your perspective on this. They're asking about like a big break moment. And I feel like you're one of these people that people look up to in the industry. They're like, oh man, he's like, got it together. Like, what was the big break moment for you? And I think that I know your answer on this, but like, did you have a big break moment? Do you feel like you've landed? Like, what's your take for someone who's looking for the big break moment? Oh man. I mean, it was a lot softer than that. It was more like um, saving all my money and going out on my own but having enough padding for a bunch of years. And that's not like an explosion. It's not a big bang. It's a, it's a soft 
little thing of, of ripples that when you after you leave your job and then you go out on your own and within a couple of months I had realized I'd made a great decision the energy that I had within my fingertips wasn't a 10 to 6 situation it was um, working until 10 in the morning if I wanted to or getting up at really early and having stuff ready to go by 10 a.m. It was yep. all the time. And that's how I got ahead. Um, but I did it strategically. It wasn't just this take this job and shove it kind of shit. But that was, the, you know, man, that's like 16 years ago now when I went on my own. Luckily, it went well. But like I said, I made sure I had money for rent. I bought a home. I made sure I had a couple years of like the mortgage covered yep. and savings before I did that. So there was some little bit of strategy to get out of that, right? And it, it sounds yeah. like uh, the advice maybe that we can take for this for if you're thinking about going on your own, starting your own thing, trying to make your own big break, lay down a safety net before you jump off the cliff. Well, like, how about this? Before you do it, make sure you have a good job, one foot in that job, one foot in the freak out because you can't just jump from one lily pad to the next. You kind of yep. got to ride both of them across the pond for a while because make sure that you can pay your rent with that job, job, job. And by the way, there's a lot of people that do this. They keep their stuff cool from nine to five and then they go home and instead of Netflixing it up all night, like all these other animals, they actually work on cool shit. And what happens is something starts to tip. And they start getting jobs for the cool shit they're working on and all the job that just it just went away. That's just that's just noise to get through your day. And then you're you're operating in this world where you manifested something. I'm seeing that happen every day in graphic design. One yes. guy to go look at is a guy named the High Road Design. Go look up the High Road Design. And if I can have my say, well, get this 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 go look them up right now. The High Road. Uh, in, and well, I guess it would be on, on Instagram. And, is that it? yeah that might be it that might be it i will find it as we talk yes we, we will get there there. It is, there it is there it is and just take a look at this wild stuff this guy is doing I've, i met him at a show but this is one of my favorite things because every day he's just playing it gets a little tricky but every day he's just playing but he is one of the most prolific guys i see out there and i don't even know how he's producing this stuff it's on some kind of like uh, 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 the ipad or something like this but he's just doing this really fun. He's got a great sense of humor and he's out there making this happen. Now he had to take a, he had to jump off, you know, from one pad to the next, this thing that he's on now, he has to really believe in himself. He's starting to get work from it. He's my age. That's really exciting to see. Right. So, you know, um, if you're going to go do it, just be smart about it. But you know, that was yeah. the, one of the big breaks to, you know, a big break would have been the book. You know, when I got to make a book and when that went out there, the numbers kind of exploded because a lot of people got to see it. But the coolest part, the book was affordable. So I just talked to him last week and the book, which was only supposed to sell 40, 4,500 or whatever, some shit. It's it's up to it's over 65,000 in the 12th printing that comes right from Abrams. Right. Whoa. So, so, so listen, in my world. 4,500 is just fine. That's enough to make a profit. That's fine. It's ego schmigo. The fact that they even got to do it was cool. But the fact that it's gone that big and was affordable for kids all over the place, that just, that's why I did it. You know, that's why I did it. I didn't want to make this thing that was uh, only for uh, some elite thing that you could only get one out of so many and then they were 150 bucks or some shit. We talked about that stuff and I was like, no, that's not what what I'm about or what I want this whole mess to be about. You know? Yep. Uh, and another question from chat, which I think we're just going to keep doing questions from chat because there's really sure. good ones coming in here. Um, so someone's asking about your style, right? We've got the geometrics, the colors. Are you inspired, a, a, I think specifically for colors, a, about like the space around you? Because it seems like you're in an inspiring place where you are um, with fall colors and trees and the rain. Uh, is that something that inspires you just being out in nature? Yeah, well, we just went, you know, Lee likes to go to that place. What do they call it? Um, um, the, oh, outside. Lee likes to go to that place they call outside. You know? Touch the grass. But every now and again, I go outside. So when we just went to Mount Hood, you know, I was just taking photos of the way that the sky meets the, you know, the mountains meets the, um, the, the woods meets the water. And, and even there, there's something pleasing that you have to kind of be right up in front of to see, right? Now, to bring that back home and, and inject math into it and really say, okay, this blue and this green and how these things interact, you know, there's a predictable quality to the stuff I make because I like when you take 100% yellow and add 20 magenta, 40 magenta, 60 magenta, and so on, and stair step that stuff up using perfect math, right? Because out in nature, it's kind of willy nilly. You just kind of, you know, you're just touching that little, you know, what a little like, uh, you know, 
it's 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 that randomness is fun but you know you have to learn how to look so if i'm left to my own devices yeah you see the thick lines and you see the stuff but i'll just go on etsy i'll go on ebay i'll go on this is all, it's all virtual right i'll go on amazon and i'll just look at new products new things old products old things and just get blown away by like stuff that surprises me the way a color reacts around another color I take a crappy little screen grab and i have a little folder on my desktop that just says color ideas yep. and then i just go and i mine from that like you don't listen you don't go and just become like you know i don't know who's an example you know who's just getting ripped off left and right i don't know i i, I gotta be careful with that stuff but <laughs> You can't just go and emulate your favorite, you know, Jessica Hish or something, you know, yep. good luck, which, good luck. which is great for, it. for learning, but not for producing. If you want to so, learn something, yeah, but not, not ripping it off. But you can, you can draft off of her success or her moves, right? So, okay. Much like the color. It's like, if someone found that color, just go and sample those things real quick and play with that. And that's comes from a space that I didn't see coming. That's a curveball. So yep. I like that stuff. So I, I'm constantly doing that to just try to change things up for myself. So it's like adding pink to this thing gave it this weird electric Ooh. quality, this little sticker that I made six, you know, six weeks ago. Um, and I don't really use hot pink all that much, but you know, Lee needed some stuff. We co-opted together and I made some new stuff that's, you know, opening some new doors for me, just sort of like, I guess, style wise or color wise or whatever. And how about this? I'm always open to that. Yes. And you know, that I goes to, back into my ruts, but I'm always open to it. Yep. Right? That goes into the question that I think we're going to close out with. Um, and that is this, right? You do a ton of work and put a ton of stuff out there. And this is a two-part question is putting that out there and generating the content. The first part is, do you still uh, find space to do stuff for yourself? And then how do you continue that? How do you stay motivated to keep making stuff? Well, first of all, like I said, when I, you know, when we started this conversation, one finger is for everybody else, kind of, you know, we'll just say client work or like something that leaves my hands. Then a couple fingers in there is field notes, skill share, which is making stuff for other people. And then, you know, you know, at some point it gets down to the merch where I'm just making it for me and I sell that stuff and make a nice living. I take care of Lee and my mom and sisters and a couple friends and stuff with that. And by the way, that's all kind of for me. You know, if you have to have such a delineation between what you're doing for your job and then yourself, fine, but understand that line and understand that it's okay to go just play because the great privilege that I'm trying to show even tomorrow is that why is it that we are so freaked out to get, take your field notes, open them up, do a quick sketch, jam it into illustrator, see if something takes because it doesn't have a price tag because it doesn't have a brief attached to it. it, doesn't have a set of emails. That's not a dirty word, right? It's not a dirty word. That's some of the best work that I'll do. It's just what I'm screwing around. Yeah. But I'm open to that. And, and like, you know, to show you the high road, it's like, you can tell that animal's just screwing around all these, you know, appendages and folds and flaps and stuff, but he's finding a space that's all his, and it's awesome. And I hope he gets a ton of work because of that, because he manifested that for himself. I'm seeing that going down all around me. By the way, I'm on my way out, man. 48 years <laughs> old. I mean, seriously, how many more years can I pull this off? I'll do it until they, you know, they they just throw me off a, you know, some sort of a, I don't know, into a into like a landfill or something. But we'll yeah. see how long it goes, you know. And, uh, yeah, I think that like this is kind of my last question, inspiration that we can close out with is that that idea right that you're on your way out that you want someone to just like take you over kick you out what advice do you have to that person right who is uh in the industry just getting started out that you're like all right you're the one you're gonna take over you're you're gonna do your own thing and kick me off the stage what motivation do you have for that person who's just coming up listen up you little rats hawk rattle you listen hawk rattle you better listen right now you're bringing a knife to a gunfight. You want to knock me off this pile of shit. You got to climb that mountain of shit with boots on. 
I don't know what I'm even talking about, but hey, man, you know what? Enjoy it while you got it, you know, and, and, and say thank you along the way to everyone who allowed you to do all this cool stuff. And when it goes away, be gracious and say thank you on the way out the door. If that's happening for me, it's OK. I, yeah. I, I, I did all right. I had a wonderful time sharing with all you people. And, and um, by the way, if you're listening to Adobe, I want to come back next year. Please, 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 Paco, <laughs> don't turn it off, Paco. I want to come back next year. I need you people. People. I want all the agile. I want the social media. I want the numbers. Hawk rattle. Don't turn it off. Don't turn. Oh, you're it always off. in. Go- you're in. You're always in. Um, okay, last one, and we're probably gonna get cut off because we don't have time. Here's, okay. Yeah. See, there here's, he is. Here's what I want to give you. Uh, and yes, thank you so much for joining us, chat one. Two, um, Voodoo Val is coming up next with another stream, so make sure that you stick around for that. It's going to be a great time. And Aaron, here is the question that I have for you. What is your secret to business? You, you t- we talked about this before, and there's a secret that you wouldn't tell anyone that you wanted to maybe mention to our audience. What is the secret to success? I can't even remember what I told you. What did I tell you? No, riff. So about, about like not screwing up your taxes. Yeah, uh, it was it was it was that other thing. The the thing about the. Um, Oh, the, the thing. Lived, yeah. Oh, Remember? it was about this long. It's yeah. The... So what that thing was, and I can't really go into detail. It was basically a thing that uh, uh, it's it's hard to describe. Okay. But it's shiny and it, it tastes good. You can step in it. You can okay. wrap it all around you. You can roll yourself up in it. And that thing, yep. is, that thing is precisely this. So it's the thing pretty- is.